Today we're going to study induction and energy transfer. So if we take some, some loop, some rectangular loop like this, this is a rectangular loop, and then we put this rectangular loop in a magnetic field. Let's see, for example, we have a magnetic field in some region. This is to the left of this red line. We have a magnetic field. Let's see in this region here. We have a magnetic field. And this magnetic field, as you see, is going into the page. Okay, it's going onto the page like that. So this is the magnetic field. But in this section here, there is no magnetic field. But in this section here, there is a magnetic field. And now, what we're going to do, this is, this loop here, this rectangular loop, is a wire. It's a wire, it's a conductor. And then we're going to pull this wire, we give it some force, we pull it with some force, and with some velocity V. This velocity here is constant. So it's constant. And we see what's going to happen to the wire as we pull. Now, we have a flux because, as you know, as I told you in the past, the flux is equal to the B field dot the area. You can see that the area and the B field, the vector area and the, and the B field are actually parallel because the, the vector area is perpendicular to the area. And you can see that the B field is going onto the page. So it's perpendicular to the area too. So we can just say that the flux is equal to the B field times the area. Now, this area here, we can look at just this region. I can call this distance here X. Okay. And this distance here, this one, I call it L. So we have L and X in this region where there is a magnetic field, in the region inside this lo small loop. Now, that area, I can put here, the flux is equal to B, the B field, times the length L times X. So this is the flux. Now, since this problem talks about induction, we're going to use uh, Faraday's law of induction. So the e, uh, electrom, uh, electromotive force E is equal to minus d phi over dt. And phi is the flux. Now we can just use magnitude. So I put here magnitude. And then I can say E is equal to d phi over dt. Okay, and E is positive here. So I can put here D, DT, and I'm assuming this BA is positive, so I put here BA. Okay, this is E is equal to B. You see this B field is not changing. It's coming from some magnet, constant magnet that's shooting this B field. So this B field is not changing. But the area as I move this, as I move this loop here to the right, this area gets smaller. So the area is changing. So I can put here D over DT. And I put the B field and I put LX because the area is LX. Now B is fixed, like I said, they come in from some magnet. This L, this L is fixed. X is variable because I'm moving this X is going to get smaller. So I put here B, L, DX over DT. But DX over DT is a velocity, so I put B, L, V. So now we found E. E is equal to B, L, V. Now we need to understand, what is this E here? That's the electromotive force, which means a voltage. So we have a voltage in this wire. 
imagine we can we can just for example say we have some battery here it's giving us this e here but this battery here that i drew it doesn't exist physically so it exists inside but it, there is no battery there it's just this emf it means you have a current so current gonna be generated now this current when i pull here the current is going to be generated in the loop. Now we need to know the direction of this current that gets generated. Now the direction, how to know the direction, you need to use Lenz's law. So we come here, write Lenz's law. So Lenz's law is going to tell us the direction of the, of the current. Now, now please pay attention because this needs understanding. You see, when I'm moving this wire to the right, this flux here decreases. So the flux is going to decrease. So as I'm closing in, you see this L is moving into the edge here. The, the lines of the B field are changing. The number of lines is getting smaller. Now what happened is I have, uh, it's like I have a, uh, a decrease in magnetic field, a decrease in number of lines of the magnetic field. Now, Lenz's law says that if the flux or this magnetic field, if a magnetic field is decreasing, what happened, the loop, the current will go in certain way to actually compensate for that decrease, which means this loop is going to generate a current, and that current is going to try to put a magnetic field into onto the paper. So we need to know which direction of current is going to help us put a magnetic field onto the paper. So let's see, for example, if I say the current is going this way. This is the current I. It's going up here. This is I coming here. Let's choose this direction, see if it's going to work. Now, we use the thumb rule. My thumb will follow the current. Look at now my fingers inside the loops. My fingers are going in. So this current is going to generate a magnetic field that's going to go in. So as we move, as we move this loop to the right, we're losing the red lines, the red magnetic field lines. But this loop is generating the black magnetic field line to compensate for what you lost. And that because of Lenz's law. Lenz's law states so. So now we have this current going around like that. If you have a current, it means you're going to generate energy. You have a power. So this current is going to radiate energy. And then we have energy per unit time, which is power. Look at here. This is the voltage. We can use Ohm's law. So we put here Ohm's law. Give us E is equal to Ri. This resistance here, this R, is the resistance of this wire. It has certain resistance. So we can say that the current I is equal to this voltage or EMF over R. But we already have this E. So we can just say I is equal to B L V over R. And here is the current. Now, if we know the B field that we had, this red B field, and we know L, we know the velocity to pull this loop and the, resist and the resistance. We can know the current that's going to go through. So this current depends on the velocity. If you pull so hard, very fast, the current will increase, will be high. If you pull slow, the current will be small. Now we need to know the power. The power is equal to Ri squared. But we have I, so I put here R b squared, l squared, v squared, over r squared. Cancel r. 
So I get the power is equal to b squared l squared v squared over r. And this is the power. Now, this power is the amount of energy per unit time that's coming out of this wire. So let's see, for example, if you come over here and then you put a light bulb like that. And then you have the, this is the filament, tungsten filament. What's going to happen? When you pull this, the, the light bulb will shine. So if you keep pulling and pushing, pull back and push, this light keeps shining. It shines for pulling, it shines for pushing. In which way you want, pull or, or push back, the light will shine. So you will have a current, you generate a current in the wire by pulling this wire. So you can see here, Faraday's law is telling us if you change the flux, you're going to get a voltage across the wire. And that voltage is going to create a current. And Lenz's law, it tells us the direction of the current, which way it's going to go. And, and now, from this experiment, you can generate a power like that. Now, we can, we can, you can do the reverse. You see this force here? Is the one that caused all of this because we pulled. If we didn't exert any force, no current will be in the wire. Now we can reverse the problem. You can, this force, take it out. Don't do anything to the loop. But if you change the flux, if you change the flux of this magnetic field, like you have some controlled magnetic field that you can control, then the loop will move. So you can either change the magnetic field, move the loop, or move the loop to get the current.